Right now on Denver 7 News at 5 a.m., another busy day out of DIA as we kick off the 4th of July weekend. I'm a little nervous as I look at them because it's a lot more people right now than were there when I was on my way here. I just don't want to be late at all. I, do, I really don't. Yeah, sometimes that line goes back through baggage claim. We have team coverage with a look at your forecast and the roads and security wait times as millions are set to travel. And it's not the 4th of July without fireworks. We'll break down the shows you can attend all across the metro this weekend. Plus, the Avs lifting the Stanley Cup high over Denver, celebrating their big win with mm. half a million people. The city of Denver and the people of Colorado, we couldn't love you guys anymore. <laughs> yeah, how fans and players are reacting to the big party downtown. So fun to see. What a production. <laughs> and uh, I'm not sure anyone wanted to leave yesterday. Oh, no. Yesterday. Yeah, yeah, no Why would was, you want to? That was so. I can't believe that it's just clear and ready for the 4th of July uh, yeah. now. Yeah, ready, ready for round After two. After all that, <laughs> uh, yeah, the weekend is here, yes. guys. We yeah. made it. Thanks for joining us on this Friday morning. I'm Brian Sanders. I'm Nicole Brady. Our whole team is getting you ready for whatever your plans are. Jason will be looking at the roads. We have Colette Bordelon at the airport checking those wait times. Let's get to Lisa first with the weekend forecast. Yeah, and a lot rides on that forecast sometimes too. And you've got outdoor plans. Beautiful this morning. Definitely cooler than what we saw at the same time yesterday. We're in the low to mid 50s right now. Winds out of the north. A weak cold front sweeping through. So it's going to bring our temperatures down a few degrees today. We're going to start off in the 60, 50s, get into the 60s here by about uh, 8, 9 o'clock and then near 80 by early afternoon. So that'll be it for highs. Things will then cool down a bit from there as we get clouds developing and another round of afternoon storms. Anywhere from 80 in Denver to 85 in Greeley. A little cooler again for the mountains. More 60s and 70s expected there with scattered thunderstorms popping up this afternoon. We have a Rockies game tonight with fireworks. We are going to see that chance of thunderstorms this afternoon through early evening, but it looks like things are going to push off to the east by about 9 to 10 o'clock. It will be a little cooler, Jason. When those storms rolled through last night, it got chilly at times. It was kind of nice. <laughs> it did. It was got down into the 60s, and then the girls wanted to go to the, they, were, they had the food truck over there at the pool, and I thought, well, it's, well let's just go to the food truck. The pool's a little cold. Uh, right now, we have a good drive going on in most places. We do still have some lingering paving on westbound I-70 going over here to El Rancho and Evergreen Parkway. Take a look from the camera up there and you can still see some of the work happening. Everybody's being pushed over to the right lanes as they're still wrapping up the last of this work. Now, once this is done, all the statewide work around uh, around the state will be done for the holiday weekend until Tuesday. And that includes this section of I-70 through that lowered section. And we won't see any work really from now all the way through the holiday weekend around the state, which will help us out. The drive overall looks great, including to or from the airport, E-470, Pena Boulevard, Tower Road. That is all wide open right now at the airport. Yeah, we'll see if it stays that way. Way. Thank you, Jason. Well, from the roads to the skies, you will have plenty of company if you're flying out of DIA today. Denver 7's Colette Bordelon is there. Hey, it looks like there are some people at baggage claim already. Uh, winding lines around today, Colette. Yeah, we've become used to kind of seeing this line. If you've been flying recently out of DIA, you know that the security line here at the South Security, it started to wrap around some baggage claim. But even since we have been here, which has only been around 10, 15 minutes so far, we've seen this line already shorten. It's around a 25 minute wait time right now. DIA did add some lines on both ends, so north and south. So now pre-check passengers could go to either and people who aren't pre-check can also go to either line. But I'm told South Security is still the best line to pick. But if you guys were wondering about those wait times at the other lines, bridge security around 12 minutes, north security for TSA pre-check about seven minutes long. But it's really moving quickly. They're getting people through. They're trying to move it along. There are around 200,000 people going through each day. Oh, and bridge one, bridge one here. I've got some people asking questions, so I'm going to help. Uh, bridge one around 12 minutes right now. They're saying this one 25 minutes, but they are still saying this is the best one. It is moving quickly, I promise. Okay, and to, get to, the bridge, we to get to the bridge, you got to go up and then you got to go across. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I just trying to be helpful, but we're going to take some sound from yesterday when people saw this line and we're just absolutely shocked. Recently, what we did is we added a limited number of standard screening lanes to the north checkpoint and a limited number of 
pre-check lanes to the south checkpoint, giving passengers more options to access the appropriate screening lane. This is the primary checkpoint for TSA so that gives you options if you are coming out here. But like I said, yesterday people were shocked. Today, some people a little bit deterred by seeing how long this line is this morning out here. But it is moving quickly, around 200,000 people each day. So yesterday, Thursday, today, Friday, these are going to be the busiest days of your 4th of July weekend. If you are getting out of town, I'm kind of jealous, but also for all of us here living in Colorado and in the Denver area, we do have it made. Really, we do. Live at DIA, Club Portal on Denver 7. Yeah, there are people in plaid vests, by the way, they can help you get around the airport, and that'll take some of the pressure off Colette there. Uh, starting today, the State Department will no longer honor expired U.S. passports. That rule was implemented during the pandemic due to processing delays and staffing cuts at consulates and embassies. Currently, passports are taking 8 to 11 weeks on average to process. It costs $130 to renew. You can pay more if you want it shipped to you faster. Record high gas prices are not stopping people from driving this weekend. There is so much pent up travel demand because of the pandemic that even high, high prices on everything from airfare to gas to hotels to car rentals is not slowing down travel demand. So the average price of regular unleaded in Colorado is four ninety one a gallon right now. That is up almost a dollar fifty from a year ago. That three forty two looks pretty nice. AAA says a lot of people are still driving, though, and then picking cheaper options once they get to their destination for lodging and food. Well, it was an estimated half a million people who flooded downtown Denver yesterday to celebrate our own Stanley Cup champions. A sea of red and blue, uh, maroon, burgundy, whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah, they lined 17th Avenue and filled Civic Center Park. Uh, the city of Denver says a lot of planning and prep work went into this, but it was a great show. People really wanted and needed this. Um, celebration today and I am really proud and happy that the city and county of Denver could do it for for everyone. It's been a rough couple of years so I just think this is a great opportunity to bring everybody down and you know really just kind of reassure folks that Denver's returning back to how it was in the before times. <laughs> Yeah, the city didn't have to start from scratch. Remember, of course, we had a parade here just six years ago when the Broncos won the Super Bowl. And now crews are back out at Civic Center Park today because uh, we're going from celebrating the Avs to celebrating America. Denver 7's Veronica Acosta joins us live. I guess it'll be more red, white and blue this weekend, Veronica. Even more celebrating. We just wrapped up that huge celebration yesterday. And just when you thought you could have a moment to maybe sit home, here comes just another one. So Denver crews, they definitely have their work cut out for them because they're going to be both cleaning up and setting up over at Civic Center Park for that fourth or the third of July celebration. Rather, they're going to be out both today and tomorrow. Again, officials say they expect this to be a pretty big celebration as well. Not quite as big as yesterday's though. They say food trucks are going to be on site. There's also going to be some music that's going to kick off at six. As for the star of the show, of course, that's going to be the fireworks themselves. Those are scheduled to start between 915 and 930. So everybody's favorite July 3rd tradition took a two year break, uh, but it is coming back um, into the park on July 3rd. We'll have the symphony. Um, we just booked local artist uh, Dragon Deer. Uh, we'll perform in front of the symphony. And music has always been part of that July 3rd experience and we're excited to uh, bring it back. And again, this is happening on Sunday, so not tomorrow, but those gates, if you're wondering, they open at four in the afternoon. In Denver, I'm Veronica Acosta, Denver 7. Thank you, Veronica. CDOT is preparing you for the holiday weekend. This digital projection will be on display near Coors Field for Friday night's Rockies game. It's just reminding you to buckle up all weekend. CDOT will also have ramped up enforcement across the state to try to prevent any traffic fatalities over the weekend. Lisa. It is now just about 510 and a pretty start to our morning. We're going to see just a few clouds out there. Take a look at Futurecast. Uh, there will be another round of thunderstorms, though, popping up this afternoon. It looks like timing wise, it's going to be a little bit later than what we saw yesterday. Uh, but again, by early afternoon, expect to see some clouds building thunderstorms through afternoon and then clearing out by about eight, nine o'clock tonight. So should see some drier conditions this evening. Yeah, it was nice to see some of that rain. It actually washed down part of downtown. That is all the roads are open. 17th Colfax Broadway. They're all open for you this morning looking at 6th Avenue coming in from Sheridan looking great from Lakewood and West Denver. No problems for us really citywide wrapping up that construction up on the uh, Genesee Drive. We'll take a look at that for you coming up in just a minute. 
Well, Spirit Airlines is grounding its merger prospects. What executives want to do before they choose between Denver-based Frontier or JetBlue. Plus, I'm John Matteris. More and more stores are getting rid of paper coupons and going to digital only. While many shoppers say that's unfair. Story coming up.